See, we have the ACT stuff for the Euler homework. We've got a 12 by 16 centimeter rectangle inscribed, which means drawn inside a circle as shown below. What is the area of the circle in square centimeters? It's actually probably an eighth grade geometry standard. It's not really a hard problem. I'm going to draw in the diameter of the circle. And we're going to find this length by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There's a lot of geometry on the ACT. Uh, if we take 12 squared, we get 144. We take 16 squared, we get 256. We put them together, we get 400. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get 20. So all the way across is 20, which means we have radiuses of 10. And everybody is supposed to know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're just going to throw a 20 in that thing. I'm sorry, a 10 in that thing. So we got a pi times a 10 to the second power, which would have to be 100 pi. Notice no use of calculator. I need one. All right, if log base a of x is n, and log base a of y is p, and then log base a of x times y times 2 must be what? Uh, so this is a property in logarithms. It's on your formula quizzes. On your formula quizzes somewhere you have uh, this, log a, b, c. It's log a plus log b plus log c. So I can rewrite this guy right here. And by the way, the 2, I'm going to put it out front as 2 times the quantity of log a of x plus log a of y. Now I'm going to use substitution. Log a of x is n. Log a of y is p. So I get to replace this guy with n. I get to replace this guy with a p. Twisty. No calculator. The logarithms on the ACT are designed to be done without technology. All right, for every positive two-digit number A, oh, I remember this question. I didn't like this question. With units digit X and tens digit Y, let B be the two-digit number formed by reversing the digits of A. So A is a two-digit number. The units digit is x, and the tens digit is y. b is a two-digit number formed by reversing the digits of a. So b would be yx. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to a minus b? Well, it's got to be f. can't be that easy, can it? We have units at x. Oh. I wrote it wrong. It's going to look out and be the same. I, I screwed up. It's not a huge deal on this problem, but I did screw up. When you're talking about writing out a number, this would be tens, wouldn't it? This would be units. Like it'd be 11, 12, 21, 26, whatever. Yeah, so the reverse of this would be x, y. Kind of weird the way this is written. But if we're doing a minus b, we're doing yx minus xy, which doesn't make sense, now does it? If I had something like 21, the reverse of that would be 12. And 21 minus 12 is 9. So my initial thought process on this one was messed up. So again, I've messed it up twice. 
Like I said, I remember doing this problem in the past, and I didn't like it then, and I probably still don't like it now. I think it has something to do with how I'm setting it up. And so I paused this one to sit back and think about how I was writing out the number. I was writing out the numbers wrong. A is the digits X plus the tens Y. You know, if you think about this number 21, X would be one, Y would be two, two times 10 is 20. B happens to reverse this, it becomes 10X plus Y, because we reverse the positions by reversing digits of A. So now it still makes sense, 10X plus Y. Because now it would make 12. So, I think. Anyways, that, that's my setup on this one. This is the one that works out. If I do A minus B, I would have X plus 10Y minus 10X plus Y. That would give me negative 9X plus 9Y, which can also be written as 9Y minus 9X, which can be factored as 9 times Y minus X. I knew I didn't like this problem. It's actually choice K. I'm going to make sure that choice K actually works. You notice I did 21 minus 12 over here and I got 9. Uh, this is Y. This is X. 9 times 2 minus 1 is still 9. So they are equivalent functions. They generate the same output, which is 9. Sorry that one took me so long. Not the first time I've messed up a day. It's a rough day. Let's see here. Reset that page. 55. If f of a equals a squared minus 2, then f of a plus b must be what? This should be no problem for any kid who's at algebra 2. We're going to let every a become a plus b. Even the ACT checks for this. So f of a plus b is going to be, there's an a, becomes a plus b. You have to square it, minus 2. If you're going to square something, you're going to write it twice. You're going to get a squared plus ba plus ba, so plus two of those things, plus a b squared, and then minus that 2. And I wrote BA, but it may as well be AB. And there's two of them, because one plus one is two. Choice E. 56. In the complex numbers where I squared is negative one, what is one over one plus I times one minus I over one minus I? Hopefully what you realize is, is that this guy and this guy are conjugates. You can also push buttons on TA4, but I'm still trying to teach you how to do things by hand. The old ways have not died yet. And as long as I have them teach, they won't die. We'll play this stuff through. And in the bottom, you only have to do the first and the last because you've done a couple of these. Maybe. I don't know. It depends on your name. I times negative I is negative I squared. Up top, 1 times anything is whatever it was. Now, they tell you that I squared is negative 1, so this would become a negative, or subtracting a negative 1, which is plus 1. So I have 1 minus I over 2. Choice J. There's the ACTs for that particular section.